And now for the first part of Bob Crippen's interview with Dr. June Scobie Rogers. Bob Crippen, thank you so much for joining us today in our series of interviews for famous people who have done first things in their lives. And um, we know your name is Bob Crippen, and the astronauts call you Crip. Uh, can you tell us why they call you Crip? <laughs> well, it's better <laughs> being called some of the other names that I've been called. <laughs> actually, uh, we uh, we had lots of Bobs in the uh, in the astronaut office, or actually even before the astronaut office, and. Uh, and I sort of offered up Crip. Somebody I think called me that one time, and it's just a contraction of my uh, of my last name. And what did uh, your friends call you when you were a kid? What were your, what was your name? I was Bobby for growing up. That's oh, what you my, were. <laughs> that was what my parents called me, and that's what uh, all my friends and schoolmates called me. Now we all know that you're a famous NASA astronaut. Um, and you participated in something that was the first of its kind. Can you tell us what that was? Well, I was very fortunate to uh, fly the very first space shuttle flight uh, with John Young on board Columbia. Uh, and it was uh, the first of its kind uh, because not only was it the first flight of the space shuttle, but uh, it was the first time we'd ever flown a, anybody into space on a vehicle that hadn't been flown unmanned uh, previously. So it was uh, quite a first. When NASA selected you to be the first shuttle pilot, what was your reaction? How did you feel? <laughs> well, I was very excited, obviously, uh, since I'd waited so long to uh, to fly. I was um, with the gentleman that was uh, the head of all of the astronauts at that time. He was the director of flight crew operations, George Abbey. And we had gone out to Ellington Air Force Base, where we uh, NASA has the T-38s that, that we all flew, uh, because the... Um, Enterprise was coming through on the back of uh, the 747, and it had landed at Ellington. And we were out walking around uh, the vehicle, looking up at it. When uh, when uh, George turned to me and he says, "Crip, how'd you like to fly the first one?" Uh, and I was uh, about to do handsprings out there on the uh, tarmac of, <laughs> of the airfield. Uh, I had uh, I really didn't think I had an opportunity to fly the first one. Uh, John Young, who was the most experienced guy we had in the, in the office, flown four times before, and he was the chief of the astronaut office, so he, he got to pick who to go fly. So I figured he'd be in the first flight, but I thought maybe they would have somebody with him that had uh, flown before. But uh, they decided to put up some of us rookies, and some way my name came out of the hat to go on the first one. <laughs> well, we're the nation thanks you for that. And was it, were you anxious at all about being the first? I mean, no person had gone up in the shuttle yet. I, I guess I really didn't think about it that much. It was just, hey, I'm gonna get to fly in space, and I'm gonna get to fly one of the neatest flights around the very first flight of the shuttle. Uh, so it was a primarily excitement. And it was very important for our nation. Was Absolutely. They, uh, well, in fact, a lot of people don't know that uh, the military, the uh, Air Force primarily, uh, uh, dictated the design of the shuttle because back when it was being built, it was supposed to fly uh, everything that we wanted to put in space, be it uh, civil, commercial, or military. And the military had the uh, driving requirements, drove the size of the payload bay, even the shape of the wings to allow us to get uh, the cross range that the Air Force wanted. This was a, a personal great feat for you as well, Crip. Can you tell us about what it meant to you personally? Well, I was uh, 28 years old when I was uh, first selected to fly on a program called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, which as would have been as an astronaut. Um, and I was uh, 43 when I first had an opportunity to fly the shuttle. So it was a long, long wait for me. Uh, and something I'd look forward to for a long time. And uh, being trained as a test pilot, uh, first are uh, always important to you, so having an opportunity to fly the first flight was uh, uh, the biggest reward I could have uh, expected. Where do you think we're going in the future with space flight? Well, the current plan with the, the present administration is to uh, be able to uh, go back to the moon and eventually on to Mars. We're building a, something called the Constellation Program, which has got a new rocket, a new capsule to put people uh, in space. 
and uh, I hope that that occurs. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the uh, with the new administration that comes into office as to whether they continue that project as we've currently got it laid out. And for this hearing the story, many of them would be the, of the age that they might go to the Mars. Absolutely. Um, it's going to be uh, certainly past my time, but uh, uh, the, I'm convinced that we will uh, send people to Mars. Uh, I just don't know exactly when, but there's a high probability that uh, some of the students that uh, are listening to this uh, will have that opportunity. Now, how old were you when you flew the shuttle for the first time? I was 43, and uh, like I said, I'd been been as an astronaut since I was 28, so I'd, <laughs> I'd been there a long time. And it helps to be uh, tenacious. You know, uh, you'll find in life that a lot of times when you uh, when some disappointments happen, there's something um, rewarding just around the corner, and uh, so you have to be prepared to take advantage of those. And if you want something bad enough. Uh, you usually can make it happen. I was fortunate enough to that it did happen, and uh, and I really wanted to fly. I can I wanted to do that from a, from an early age, and uh, so uh, I strive to do well in school so that uh, that I could eventually eventually reach that goal. So there were a lot of a lot of enthusiasm as since of childhood days to fly and uh, lots of preparation to get to that opportunity to be an astronaut and then fly the first shuttle? As a child, I grew up uh, out in the country uh, going to attending a small school. And um, we only had like 20 people in my graduating class. Uh, and so the school itself was not um, really the, <laughs> the right thing to prepare me for uh, what I wanted to do. So when I uh, finally uh, got into college, it was, uh, it was pretty hard uh, uh, my first couple of years uh, trying to get up to speed with the, the kids that had a little bit better preparation than I did. When you were a youngster, what was your favorite school subject? Well, I uh, probably uh, favored uh, both math and history. Uh, I've always been a, uh, a fan of history. I uh, think we, there's a lot to learn from uh, looking at what has preceded us. Uh, and uh, mathematics always uh, came reasonably easy to me, so... Uh, uh, I guess that was why I liked it. I wasn't good at English, but I later discovered that, uh, you know, to be a good engineer or to be a good pilot, uh, you have to be able to go explain things to people. And if you uh, if you don't uh, study how to speak and write, uh, you can't get very far. <laughs> was that your greatest challenge as a child? Oh uh, no, I don't. I, I don't know if it was my uh, my greatest challenge. Probably. Um, my greatest challenge was uh, uh, just to try to uh, to do well in school. <laughs> How about as an adult? Any special challenges that you've overcome? Well, uh, there have been uh, been several, I guess. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I was uh, a pilot on the program called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, and uh, that program got canceled after I'd been on it for a couple of years. I was one of the low points in my life. I didn't, wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I was lucky enough to be picked up by uh, by NASA after that. So it's, again, one of those things uh, you never can tell what's uh, what's going to be around the next corner. Probably the next uh, biggest challenge, um, other than uh, flying the, the shuttle four times, was uh, one that you're well aware of uh, when we lost Challenger. Uh, I uh, was asked if I would uh, give up my flying boots and go help run the program and uh, and try to get it back on track. And that was probably one of the toughest challenges I've ever uh, undertaken and, uh, and perhaps one of the most rewarding uh, when it was accomplished. And the nation thanks you for that, and we do too at Challenger Center. Um, Chris, and uh, I, I, was, I was going to say uh, also, uh, again, as you're very well uh, Part of the reason I wanted to undertake that was um, the commander of uh, the Challenger when we lost it was uh, was Dick Scobie, who had flown with me on Mission 41C and contributed a great deal to the uh, success of that mission. He was a good friend, so uh, trying to do what I thought he would want and that and the rest of the crew would want, and that's get the shuttle back flying again. <laughs> that's great. 
Thank you for listening to part one of Challenger Center's premier podcast with Bob Crippen and Dr. June Scobie Rogers. Stay tuned for the next segment where you'll find out who Bob Crippen's best friend is and what was the hardest decision he ever had to make.